Good morning. Well, I thought I'd have a bit of a go at explaining what the NEA or the non-examined assessment part of the A-level course is all about for you guys to kind of watch, to review. Uh, first time for me to make one of these little videos as well. Uh, hopefully it's useful. Um, basically, the NEA stands for the non-examined assessment, okay? Coursework to you and me. It makes up 20% of the overall A-level. So it's really worth getting your head around it and kind of getting a good understanding, getting on top of it, getting it out of the way as early as possible so you can focus on those exams in the kind of latter half of the year. So the aim of this video, like I say, to talk you through a little bit about the different sections, about what's expected of you, about what sort of help you can expect from your teacher, um, just so that we can hopefully clear up any of the obvious questions. Um, but if you do have any other issues, then obviously you can just submit a request through the website. So, firstly, the report or in the coursework is broken down into four main sections. The first section is the, the introduction or the purpose. Um, in there, you kind of break down your aims your hypotheses. Now, you can have a little bit of help with those and support in developing those with your teacher or with me, and we'll discuss those. Then, also in that introduction, it's good to have maybe a definition section um, where you can kind of define some of the key ideas. And remember, this is a working document, so you can always come back and add and edit any of those as, as you're going on. Um, your introduction also benefits from a section on the location, um, or the location or context of the investigation, where you can set out your parameters and kind of exactly where you're gonna study and maybe some of its history and it's kind of relevant, the relevant uh, geography of that area. And it's also good to have a scientific background, which is, or a literature review, where you're kind of analyzing kind of past or uh, other literature on in a similar area and sort of saying maybe you're going to compare your results with someone else's results maybe you're going to extend someone else's results but if you can find two or three key articles or journals that can link in with your aims and your projects then it just really helps you um, both when it comes to the evaluation and to kind of structure your report so that's the first section introduction and that's marked out of 12. the second section is the methodology Okay, so pretty standard, like you do in science, this is where you just set out your methods for how you're going to go and collect your primary and secondary data. Each report must have both primary and secondary data within it. So I find the best way to do this is as a methods table. You can have your um, variable, your method, or kind of method for collecting the data. Then you want your sort of sampling technique and then any kind of justif justification for why you're doing it, or you might want to have a column in there about the kind of, um, sampling or evaluation, sorry, of the, of the technique itself, so what the kind of pros and cons were. But it only needs to be brief in there, and if that comes later on, that's, that's fine as well. Um, in your methodology, it's really important you also discuss any kind of ethical concerns about conducting your questionnaire. Uh, these depend a little bit these are slightly different if you're doing kind of physical or human geography focus of your report um, and sampling is really really key so how are you going to collect your I said when are you so when are you going to collect your data uh, how much data are you going to collect what methods are you going to use to cut to kind of decide those factors and and kind of what's the justification for using it uh, and also we'll come on to this more in the evaluation how that will impact the overall outcome of the project okay um, ask the methodology once we, we want to go out and collect our data but so methodology is marked out of 10 so so far we've got the introduction out of 12 methodology out of 10 and um, the next two sections of the report are kind of the meat of it if you like that's this is really where kind of most of the marks are gained um, so next is called the data representation I find it easiest to break this down into two parts with the data presentation in there, what we're looking to do is to kind of produce all of our um, tables, all of our graphs. 
We want to have some simple graphs, maybe some line graphs, some bar graphs. We want to have some more complex data presentations, some scatter graphs, some GIS, um, where we're kind of overlaying multiple variables uh, to, to compare them. We also we need to make sure we're comparing, we've got evidence of both our primary and secondary data within those graphs as well. Um, so that's the data presentation. We also want to do as part of the data presentation a statistical test. So that could be a chi-squared test, that could be Spearman's rank, could be the Man whitney u test, depending on the kind of data you've collected and the kind of hypotheses you've set, but we'll do more about that later on. Um, once you've got your graphs made and you've made sure they've all got a title and they've all got a little caption, or figure heading, axes, labels, all that kind of general stuff, then the next section of that kind of data representation is where we just do a bit of data analysis. So underneath each graph, a little paragraph or so where we can explain what it shows, um, how it links in with our hypothesis, and how it, um, any anomalies in there, maybe we could start to consider why those anomalies might exist, but the key thing there is we're just tying the graph back in with our initial aim and hypothesis, okay? Then once we've done our data representation, once the final section of the report or the investigation, which is our conclusion and evaluation. Now, these are worth 24 marks. So it, it, lots of people just kind of do a little paragraph or, for each of these at the end, but then it needs to be more involved than that. So conclusion is where really we look at what we're looking to do is looking to sum up all of the data analysis into an, almost like a, a mini essay here. We're looking, so we're looking to repeat what we've said, yes, but we're looking to kind of draw the various strands together to really explain what we found an overall kind of answer our aim or and answer each of our hypotheses and our aim um, and draw together the primary and the secondary data all in there into kind of one almost like a one evaluate or uh, explain kind of question and um, then our evaluation is a, a really where we're going to kind of talk about the kind of strengths weaknesses of the data of the conclusions we've made link in with the um, sampling why that might be not be applicable to in certain circumstances any weaknesses in our data collection and just kind of acknowledge all of those various factors now you do get marks for conclusion and evaluation throughout the report it's not like if you, I, the evaluation is only marked in that section if you put in your methods some of the weaknesses then that will also contribute to your marks in the end of the document and um, finally and this is really important is it's not uh, in, in, to in generating the overall marks it's, it's really important for your kind of developing your writing style as well we need to have at the end a couple of key things we need to have an appendix where we have any kind of big data tables which maybe were too ch or graphs which are too chunky to put into the text or maybe some it's a template of the um, questionnaire we asked maybe it's uh, the Spearman's rank coefficient like tables um, the, the um, significance tables, which we don't need in the report. It's just getting in the way and ruining the flow of the document, but we need to have that at the end. We also need to make sure at the end we've got a bibliography or, or a reference list, which is where every time we're referring to an article, we're referring to a, a, some other evidence, particularly our secondary data, we're referencing exactly where, that, where we've got that data from so that the reader uh, or the marker can go and kind of check the validity of what you've said. So if you said that this piece of data found this, then we need to be able to, to back that up and to support it. So the reference list is another really important part of the document, which just means we can kind of see where you've kind of based those certain viewpoints or certain ideas from, which is why that reading at the start, and that's literature review, is really, really useful. And to get that right, it, it will, will make the report a whole load easier. Well, I hope that's a useful introduction to you and I hope this video isn't too cringy. I'll say it's my first time of doing it. Um, I hope it's useful and good luck.